And we only have a little bit of this, the ninth chapter of Silver on the Tree, to finish reading. Will and Bran have entered the Lost Land, where nobody seems to notice them until they were welcomed to the city. They have just found out that the Lost Land contains the city, the country, and the castle. And they have been welcomed by a man who wants to know why they have come. And we will pick up from there. As he, sm as he spoke, he made a small motion with one hand with one hand toward the space before him. Will looked and gasped. His head sang with shock. All at once he was very cold. Out there, in a vast space that had been darkness a second before, stretched a huge crowd of blank, upturned faces. Row upon row, thousands of people in tears. In endless galleries, they sat staring at him. Their awareness pressed down on him like an unbearable weight, paralyzing his mind. It was like facing the whole world. Will clenched his fists and felt the cool metal of the hunting horn still against his fingers. Taking a deep breath, taking a deep, slow breath, he said in a loud, clear voice, We have come for the crystal sword! And they laughed. It was not tolerant, friendly laughter at all. It was horrible. A deep roar rose from the vast audience there, swelling like long thunder, mocking, jeering, breaking over him in a wave of contempt. He could see individuals pointing, pointing mouths wide with scornful mirth. The ocean of their loud mockery engulfed him so that he trembled and knew himself to be small, insignificant, dwindling down. Bran's voice beside him shouted furiously into the, into the uproar. We have come for Irias! All sound vanished as totally as if someone had turned a switch. In an instant, all the jeering faces were gone. Will drooped suddenly, hearing his tight-held breath go out in a small, weak gasp. And Bran said again, wondering to himself, We have come for Irias. He seemed to be tasting the name. The man with the gray beard said softly, You have indeed. He stepped forward, hands outspread, taking each of them, by the shoulder, he turned them to face the black emptiness where the endless rows of faces had been. He said, There is nobody there, no one, nothing, nothing but space. They were all an appearance. But look up, look up behind you, and there you shall see. Automatically, they turned and stood staring over their heads like a balcony suspended in the air was the bright lit gallery through which they had walked among the unhearing reading people. Everything was there, the books, the shelves, the heavy tables, the readers still moved idly to and fro or stood gazing at the shelves, and the space through which they were looking into the room was the fourth wall, which had not seemed to be there. Will said, This place is a theater come to life. The man figured the point of his beard, pushing it forward with one finger. All life is a theater, he said. We are all actors, you and I. In a play which nobody wrote and which nobody will see, we have no audience but ourselves, he laughed gently. <laughs> Some players would say this is the best kind of theater there can be. Bran smiled in response, a small rueful smile, but Will was still listening to a single word echoing inside his head. He said to Bran, Arias, I didn't know, Bran said. It just came. It's a Welsh word. It means a big fire ablaze. And the crystal sword blazes indeed, said the bearded man. Or so they tell, for few living have ever seen it within memory here. But we must find it, Will said. Yes, said the man. I know why you are here. When you ask the question about this land, it is not for our want of the answers. I know who you are, Will Stanton, Bran Davies. Perhaps even better, he looked hard for an instant at Bran, than you know yourselves. And as for me, you will know me soon. You may call me Gwine. Or Gwion. And I shall show you the city. The lost land, Bran said half to himself. Yes, said the man called Gwion. He was, a, he was a lean, neat figure in black clothes, and his beard glinted in the bright light of, of the, from the overhead. The lost land! And as I said to you, 
there lie within it the city and the country and the castle, and the castle is where you must go in the end, but you cannot get there except by way of the rest. So here you will begin within the city, my city, which I greatly love. You must take good note of it, for it is one of the wonders of the world that will not come again. He smiled at them, a brilliant sudden smile lit his face with warmth and affection, and lit their own spirits simply by looking. See, he said, swinging round, opening his arms to the back of the space that was like a stage. And the bright-lit gallery overhead disappeared, and the city grew diffuse, glowing all around, and suddenly they found they were in a great open city square. It was edged by pillared gray-white buildings gleaming in the sunlight, filled with people and music and the calls of traders, at bright-colored stalls, and the sparkle and splash of water flung high by fountains. The sun was warm on their faces. Will felt the light rushing through him, as if the blood in his veins were dancing, and he looked at Bran and saw the same joy shining in his face, laughing at them. Guion drew them across the square, through the crowd, among the people of the Lost Land, and that is the end of chapter 9.